Thank you all for coming. Again, welcome to our house. And um, again, the first part of our series here will be what we, the class on what we call My Thoughts. This week I'd like to deal with a topic called Driver or Passenger. You know, I'm a bit of a car enthusiast. I enjoy driving cars that are fast and handle well. A few years ago, I was offered a complimentary day at the BMW Driving School in South Carolina. I was thrilled. My wife and I drove down to South Carolina, and the truth is I couldn't wait to get behind the wheel of a new BMW and speed around the track. I didn't realize it until I entered the class that my high-speed track racing experience actually took place already as I sped down I-75 on my way to South Carolina. See, the class consisted of learning how to drive under difficult situations, conditions. The instructor explained to us that we would be doing about what we'd be doing that day. It would be a series of courses that would help us to better be better drivers, especially in bad weather and other hazardous conditions. He said that if anyone should feel car sick, you know, dizzy or have an unsettled feeling, they should exit the vehicle until they would gain their equilibrium. I heard his comment. Really, I, I just smiled and thought to myself, how could anyone who was here for this class get car sick? After all, anyone who attends one of these classes would have to be a true car enthusiast. Well, I was wrong, <laughs> very wrong. We drove in pairs, one person driving and the other the passenger, and then we would switch places. Being the driver was great, and I had a great time. Now, I would have preferred speeding around a track, but the exercises and sharp maneuvers that we did that we were taught basically were, were interesting and informative. Well, that was until we switched places, and now I was the passenger. Now, at first it was fine, but all that twisting and turning, bouncing around, got to me. <laughs> I was car sick. It surprised me, since I had never been car sick before in my life. So I had to exit the vehicle, and I felt real nauseous. I was glad to be on solid ground, and I didn't even finish the last event of the day. I left early. Here I thought this would be one of those very special days, and <laughs> I was car sick. Life. But I learned some important information about driving. For instance, we were all taught to place both hands on a steering wheel, the sequence being one at 10 o'clock and one at 2 o'clock. The instructor showed us how that position limited our movement forcing us to move one hand over the other when you make a turn. You have to rain, put your hand over. He then showed us that if we get both of our hands at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, then we would not have to move our hands at all. We could turn the car perfectly and be much more efficient and be able to react to situations. Now, spiritually, the change made complete sense to me. The number 9 and 3 have deep meaning in Kabbalah. Nine is the number that alludes to truth, emet. If you multiply any number times nine, it will always equal nine. For example, two times nine is 18. One and eight is nine. Six times nine is 54. Five and four is nine. It makes no difference how many numbers that you use. It will always come back to nine. Truth is constant. It never changes. And number three is found many times in the Torah. There are three fathers of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God gave us a thrice-divided Torah, five books of the Torah, eight books of the prophets, and 11 books of the writing, called Tanakh, Torah, Nevi'im, and Kesuvim. The Torah was given in the third month, the month, Hebrew month of Sivan, by Moshe, who was the third child born to his mother. Also to a people who will be divided into three groups, the priests, the Levites, and the Israelites. In addition, we await the coming of the third temple. The garments of the soul, Kabbalistically, are, th are thought, speech, and action. Three. The list goes on. This may well be also why the Christians adopted the idea of what we call the Trinity. Now, even in science, the basic um, block, block, building block of the universe, the atom, is broken up into three parts. A proton, a neutron, and an electron. 
But more than a lesson in driving, I was really able to learn a lesson in life. The question becomes, are you a driver or a passenger? Do others dictate your direction and movement in life? Are you a passenger or are you a driver in control of what happens as much as one can be within the confines of your vehicle? Now, generally, I am a driver. I know for a fact that there are people who don't like to drive with me in a car. They feel that I drive too fast or I corner too sharply. Now, to me, everything seems just fine. <laughs> I know that everything I'm doing is under complete control. <laughs> right. I know that. But the passenger sees the whole experience completely differently. When I was a passenger in South Carolina, I saw the whole driving experience in a totally different light. From the passenger seat, everything seemed faster, closer, and somewhat tentative. You have nothing to hold on to. All you do is watch, which many times just makes things worse. You are totally dependent on the driver. So believing in the driver, having faith in their judgment and ability, actually makes the whole driving experience pleasant and, some, and basically even enjoyable. You know, my wife loves traveling by car <laughs> as long as she's the passenger. Oh yeah, she keeps her eyes closed a lot. In life, there are drivers and passengers. It's important to know which one you are and then adjust your life based on hard facts. In reality, everyone is a passenger or a driver sometimes. Life doesn't always ask for volunteers. Life is about problem solving. I always say that if a skunk stinks, I have no problem with that. But if a squirrel stinks, huh, that's totally different. When we have a problem in life, it's, it is unusual and it is unusual or unexpected. Well, we may get blindsided. Then we need to regroup. We need to assess the situation and choose a course of action, a response, a response that fits the situation. As an aside, many times, the proper action is no action at all. Hasty decisions usually come from emotion, many times anger. Anger is like picking up a hot pot. The only one being burned is you. So let go of the pot. And if you have to pick it up again, then do so maybe an hour later or even better the next day. Then you can hold on to that pot forever. It will never burn you. We must try to do the best we can under the circumstances. But think of it, even if we fail, we hopefully have learned how to better handle the situation should it occur again. So in life, connecting ourselves to the right driver becomes essential. We all need direction and guidance. What we all need is a GPS system to guide us on our path in life. Something to correct our mistakes when we make a wrong turn and need a new calibration to get us, pardon me, calculation to get us back on track. What we all need to do is to connect to our in internal GPS, God Positioning Satellite. The receiver, the screen that resides in our soul, it receives its information from God through the instruction manual that God has given us, His Torah. It even recalculates for us when we make a wrong turn. It's called tshuva, repentance. You know, life has a way of being repetitious. If you don't take care of a problem now, it will keep coming back until you do. No one says that it's so simple that we can put our lives together and be the ultimate driver. If we look into the stories of the Torah, we are reduced to the superstars of our nature, our illustrious ancestors. Yes, they were great, but they all sinned. Sinning didn't stop them. They corrected their ways and they continued on their chosen path. They took hold of the wheel and steered their way through this minefield that we call life. Their lives are a pristine example for us in our journey in this world. We need to follow their examples and steer a course in life that gives us true happiness, contentment, and a closer and warmer relationship with God and man alike holding on to our steering wheel with our hands at the 9 and 3 o'clock position. Being a driver in this world comes with a great amount of responsibility. 
The passenger is free to read, text, sleep. No problem. They are along, as the saying goes, for the ride. However, the driver is in a totally different scenario. Think of it. If the driver were to read, text, or sleep, or, or just take his eyes off the road for an extended period of time, the results could be injurious, if not deadly, not only to them, but to others as well. You know, we are all drivers in some arena, whether at home with our wives and children or at work with our employees or co-workers. How we drive our lives has a direct influence on the quality and the challenges of their lives. Some of us may not drive a car often, if at all, but we are all responsible to navigate and keep ourselves our vehicle on the road of life. Stay awake at the wheel. Watch the speed limit, obey the laws. In the end, if we get ticketed, if we crash, fail to reach our destination, or just break down, we will have no one to blame but ourselves. At the same time, you know, we are all passengers at some time, whether it's in a plane, a train, or a bus. At some time in our lives, we all have to put our trust in someone else's ability to drive. But before we do, we should look for carriers with good safety records. After all, our lives are on the line. But so too with our spiritual lives. We need to attach ourselves to spiritual leaders who have proven themselves to be kind, caring, and righteous individuals. Someone who is a pristine example of what it is to be a true Eved Hashem, a true servant of God. Someone who can teach and inspire us to drive our vehicle properly through life. Someone who can give us the proper directions to be happier, probably to be a happier, more fulfilling existence. One that is acceptable, again, to man and to God alike. Now, according to Jewish law, when you turn 13 for a boy or 12 for a girl, God gives you, so to speak, a driver's license. With that license comes culpability. We are now considered adults responsible for our actions. We can drive, and many times we are in a hurry to do so. <laughs> Youth many times comes with a sense of carelessness, as the saying goes. Fools rush in where others fear to tread. God expects young adults to study the laws of, of the road of life, the Torah. In it they will find all the laws that they must obey as they mature and navigate the highways of life. Compliance is mandatory, and there are consequences for disobedience. Fines and other forms of penalties are listed for those who do not follow the proper path. Now, the Book of Torah teaches us to drive responsibly, to follow the laws and show courtesy and respect to our fellow drivers. It is like a mechanic's manual. It teaches how to fix things to break down on our journey. There are breakdowns that require experts to help us fix the problem. It is important that we get the right mechanic. In life, many people go to the wrong mechanic, and their lives are a reflection of that choice. Their problems are not solved, but they continue to pay for the services. God, in his ultimate mercy and concern, has given us not only an instruction manual to assist us in our journey, but also, so to speak, roadside assistance. He has also given us great and learned righteous individuals, so to speak, NASCAR mechanics, to help us tune up our vehicle and to show us the proper way to maintain it, keeping it running smoothly, properly in our journey down the road of life. We have our own GPS, God Positioning Satellite, each one of us. Our job is to stay awake at the wheel and follow the prompts. If we do make a wrong turn, we must believe that the GPS will recalculate and get us back on the correct path. The tour is like the marked lanes on an expressway. Imagine, if they just paved the highway and it's just it's totally black, they haven't been able to put the stripes on the highway yet. Without the lanes being marked, think of it, how many cars do you think will go around a sharp curve at 55 or 70 miles an hour? One? No one trusts the other driver to stay in his lane because there is no lane. However, once the lanes are painted on the pavement, well, 
then three cars can easily maneuver the curb, even at high speeds. No problem. Truth is, we don't even give it a second thought. And so too with us, the Torah, our instructional manual, there are stripes on the highway of life showing us the right path that we must travel. But each one of us must stay in our own lane. We each have our own mission in life. The road we travel will bring us to that proper destination. If we drift out of our lanes, you know, our lane departure warning system begins to beep. So to speak, our yates a tov, or a good inclination. Sometimes we have the volume turned down so low that we can't hear it. We need to make sure that it's up all the time and we need to check it from time to time. You know, the devil, our Yetzirah, our evil inclination, likes to turn down the volume. Sometimes we look around and we see tall grass that's all around us. We realize we must have fallen asleep at the wheel and driven off the road. The good news is, the highway of life that God has chosen for us is three lanes wide and well lit. So we know exactly where we need to go to get back on the right lane in our lives. The world many times tries to convince us that we should get on their bus. Take it easy. Why work so hard? Who needs to be moral? We need to be drivers of our lives. We need to use our GPS to direct us to places where we can be productive, happy, responsible members of society. We need to accept our mission in life to be a light unto the nations, to bring them up to our level and not have them bring us down to theirs. We need to drive. But in the end, we are no different than the little child who is strapped into a car seat in the back seat of a car. It happens that that car seat is outfitted with a toy steering wheel. <laughs> the baby is in the back seat having the time of his life because he actually thinks he is driving the car. That kind of, uh, that's kind of our relationship with God Almighty. We go through life thinking that we are running everything, but in reality, everything that happens in this world is orchestrated by God Almighty himself. He allows us the illusion of total freedom. And with that, may we be the drivers and passengers that will merit to herald in the coming of Mashiach quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. Stay happy. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Good night.